Right, this is the fourth and final section on the series chapter in the core two further maths module. And now we're going to be looking at series expansions for compound functions. Now, what I mean by compound functions is that it's no longer going to be, let's say, sine x. It might be sine 3x plus 1. It might not be e to the x. It may be e to the cos x. Uh, it may not be log of 1 plus x, it may be 1 or, uh, of, sorry, log of 1 plus x squared. Now, the way that we deal with that is we replace x with our new value of x. What do I mean by that? So here's an example. If I needed to do an expansion for arctan of 6x, then what I would do in the expansion, I just replace the x's with 6x that's all I do yeah that's a compound function so you replace all the x's in expansion with 6x so basically this would be 6x here this would be 6x all cubed this would be 6x all to the power 5 and so on now that does mean that the range in which the expansion is valid will change so if I did put 6x into the expansion I would go from the the expansion being valid from this. Now, what did I do? I replaced the x with 6x. So it would be valid for this. Now, we want to write this in the form where it's x in the middle. So we would divide everything by 6. And we would have negative a 6x, a 6. Yeah, so that's all we do. Everywhere that you see an x, you replace it with the other value of x that's given in the question. Now, all of these expansions are given in the formula book. It says it there. So all in the formula book. So you don't need to remember them. But you could be asked to generate these from scratch. So in the previous exercise, we did sign x, didn't we, from scratch? We've done uh, log of 1 plus x from scratch. We haven't done e to the x um, or cos x or arctan x, but we, we generate those in the same way. So just because in the for they're in the formula book doesn't mean, all right, OK, I don't need to work out what these are from scratch. You can be asked to do that. So I've got the what would be in the formula book over here for reference. Write down the first four terms, so four terms only, or first four non-zero terms. So if a couple of those are zeros, they don't count as terms. In a series expansion, expand uh, uh, ascending powers of x cos 2x squared. So all that means, this is not having to work out f of differentiating it and working out f of zero, f dash of zero. All it's doing is taking where we see where we see x in the expansion, which we've got over here, we replace it with in this case two x squared. So this is the one that we want here. We don't need to bother about what it's valid for because this one, it says it's valid for all x. So changing that to 2x squared isn't going to make a difference. So let's just put the quotes there. OK, so cos 2x squared. Now, because we're only writing out the first four terms, um, we should really write that it's approximately equal to that. But if we put plus dot 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 on the end to show, OK, it carries on. We don't have to put um, a, a approximation sign. We can put an equal sign as long as we show that this, this uh, expansion after the first four term, terms, it does carry on. So one is the first term second term minus so it's going to be 2x squared all squared so be careful with that over 2 factorial 
the next term is going to be plus 2x squared all to the power 4 over 4 factorial. Now how many terms did it want? 4. So you'll notice actually in the formula it only gives like the first three but we can probably work out what happens next. The next one's going to be negative 2x squared power 6 over 6 factorial just using the pattern uh, would be helpful if I wrote in that this is um, x squared oh I've already got it there so all I need to do is tidy this up basically now simplify as much as I can so equals oh yeah and we'll do plus dot 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 I did say that so 1 minus so 2x squared all squared is going to be 4x to the power 4 over 2 factorial the next one 2 to the power 4 2 4 8 16 x to the power 8 over 4 factorial uh, minus 2 4 8 16 32 64 x to the power 12 over 6 factorial plus dot 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 <clears throat> now um, we can leave it like that but I'm sure we can probably simplify this down because 4 divided by 2 factorial will just become 2 so here we have 2 x to the power 4 16 divided by 4 factorial or 24 is 2 thirds so we get plus 2 x8 over 3 minus well 64 divided by 6 factorial is 4 over 45 so we can write that as 4 x to 12 over 45 plus dot 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 so there we go we've uh, generated this compound function which we could then use to solve problems so let's have a look at this question here so the first thing is that it says we want the first three non-zero terms in this expansion and then it asks for the values of x for which it is valid. So let's just highlight the expansion we're going to use, which is this one here. So before we can use it, we need to get it into the right format because you'll notice that it says log 1 plus x. We don't have that, so we're going to use the rules of logs to write that into a form uh, that allows us to use that expansion. So, first of all, the log of the square root of 1 plus 2x over 1 minus 3x. So, the rules of logs say that we can write it as a subtraction the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. Uh, this 1 plus 2x root we can write as 1 plus 2x to the power half. That half can go to the front. So we now have this. If I put the log in, I don't miss that answer. So half log 1 plus 2x minus log 1 minus 3x. So here we go. What we're going to do is with this bit here, wherever we see x in the expansion, we're going to replace it with 2x. And with this bit here, wherever we see x in the expansion, we're going to replace it with negative 3x, probably in brackets to make sure things get worked out. So let's do that. So we're going to have half. So this is me replacing the x with 2x. So half, because I've got half in the front here, that came from that. Now we're going to do the expansion 2x minus 2x all squared, because remember we're replacing 
x with 2x so if it was x squared it's now going to be 2x all squared plus 2x all cubed over 3 um, it said the first three non-zero terms so I've got three terms there I'm actually going to do another one just in case anything cancels cancels out I don't want to miss anything so 2x to the power of 4 over 4 plus dot 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 minus now the same expansion but with negative 3x so negative 3x there uh, minus negative 3x all squared over 2 plus negative 3x all cubed over 3 minus negative 3x all to the power 4 over 4 I'm not sure I put 3 factorial just uh, 3 um, plus dot 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 All right let's so let's simplify this as we go along so half of 2x is going to be x next term 4x squared over 2 that's 2x squared half of 2x squared is just x squared next term is going to be 8x cubed over 3 and half of 8x cubed over 3 is going to be 4 thirds x cubed then the next term we will have 2 4 8 16 x to the 4 over 4 so that's 4 x to the 4 half of 4 x to the 4 is 2 x to the 4 so minus 2 x to the 4 so that's the first bit done we need to subtract all of this so in the second bracket we'll have negative 3 x then we'll have negative 3x all squared which is 9x squared over 2 so um, we're subtracting and it's positive so 9x squared over 2 the next one will be negative 27x cubed over 3 that will become 9 over 1 We'll just do that there saves a little bit of time later on and then the next one that will be minus uh, 81 3 to the power 4 81 x to the power 4 over 4 can't see how I can simplify that suppose I should put plus dot 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 to show it goes on forever notice that in the second set of brackets every term works out as a negative even though the original expansion alternates between positive and negative here this bit everything comes out as negative and you can probably sit down and work out for yourself why these are all negative and there's no positive terms here and why it's not alternating between positive and negative so the last bit now is just to well it's not the last bit but the next bit is to tidy this up so we have x here subtract negative 3x which is the same as uh, x plus 3x so that will give me 4x as the first term so I'm a third of the way there I only want three terms so I didn't need my x to the power 4 but you know it's it's useful to have it there anyway just in case so now we've got negative x squared minus negative 9 over 2 which is the same as negative x squared plus 9 over 2 which is like negative 1 plus 9 over 2 let's just work that out negative 1 plus 9 over 2 and that will give me 7 over 2 so the x squared terms become plus 7 over 2 x squared we only need one more we don't need the x to the power 4 so we've got 4 over 3 so I'll just type that in my calculator uh, here and we're subtracting negative 9 which is the same as adding 9 and that gives us 31 over 3 so we will now have and it's a positive so plus 31 over 3 x cubed so we know that carries on like that now we need to say 
the values for which it's valid. Now, if I go back and sort of color code, do you remember this here? Now, if we substituted x for 2x, when is this bit valid? Okay, so the original expansion is valid between negative 1 and 1. Let's put this in green. I substituted in green x for 2x, so let's do that. So we get that. The inequality needs to be written with um, x in the middle, so we're going to divide everything by 2, so we'll get a half, 2x, less than or equal to a half. We're going to keep that to one side for the minute, like this. We're going to do the same for what I did in blue. So again, the original expansion is from negative 1 to 1. And I replaced the x with negative 3x. So I'll do this in blue because that's the color I did it before. So um, negative 1, I've just realized. Let's stick the negative 1 here and here. You're probably wondering where they were. So let's put those negatives in. Um, and this is valid now. And I need negative 3x here in the brackets. Now, if I divide both sides by negative 3, you'll remember from GCSE, when you divide an inequality, multiply divide an inequality by a ne negative number, you flip the signs. So this will become, so a third, so rather than less than, it's going to become greater than x. And this will become negative a third. So if we flip that around, it becomes negative third here, x a third. Now we've got our two inequalities. Now this will be valid for when these two inequalities overlap let's correct that and that should be 2x you're probably worried what's going on so that should be x so we've got our two inequalities there this expansion will be valid where these two inequalities overlap now if i drew these on a number line we've got zero here we've got our inequality in green which is valid between uh, negative a half and a half. We've got our inequality in blue, which is valid between negative a third, which is there, and positive a third. So we've got one inequality that looks like this. Got a one in green. I suppose I should have done that in green. And one inequality that looks like this now when are both of those inequalities valid they're both valid here so when you've got two expansions when are they both valid well it's where the inequalities overlap and that's where they overlap so a final answer would be that it's um just write down expansion valid four and it was negative a third less than or equal to x less than a third. Looking at this question, first thing we're going to do here is basically ignore any parts of the expansion where the power is greater than four. So ignore any part of expansion where we have uh, per power is greater than four. 
that's the first thing and then it says over here use this expansions for e to the x and sine sine x so let's just highlight those e to the x is there sine x is here you can see that um, e to the x is valid for all x sine x is valid for all x so this composite function will also be valid for all x Now we can't just substitute sine x into this expansion and put 1 plus sine x plus sine x squared um, over 2 factorial and so on. We can only substitute uh, a polynomial into this. So its expansion gets substituted into expansion. So we substitute in the expansion for sine x not sine x itself. So the first thing to do is write out the expansion for sine x and we are going to ignore any part of the expansion where the power is greater than 4. So x cubed over 3 factorial and we stop there. We don't go any further. So what does that mean? Well that means that e to the x or e to the sine x Replacing that sine x with its expansion um, will give us e to the x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 like that. So that's step number one. Next step is now to, um, we could substitute this in into the expansion. That's probably going to be quite tricky to do. That is a possibility. Or we can use the rules of powers to write this as a division and then divide one expansion by the other. Or the other possibility we have is to write it as a multiplication, e to the x times by um, e to the power of negative x cubed over 3 factorial. Multiplying polynomials is the way we're going to go because that's the easier way to do it. But as I said, not the only way of doing it, but we want to try and make the working as easy as possible. So we get e to the x times by e to the negative x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6. OK, and we're ignoring the rest of that. So let's write what these expansions are. So e to the x expanded is just going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. OK, and we stop there. That's going to get multiplied by this expansion. And that's going to be 1 uh, plus negative x cubed over 6 which is the 3 factorial plus um, the negative x cubed over 6 squared over 2 factorial now we're going to stop there because when this bit gets multiplied out here we're going to end up at power 6 so that's going to be too big. So there's no point going any further. So really I should put plus dot 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 to show that actually I haven't reached the end of that expansion. Now to save time, I'm only going to multiply the terms, which I know are going to give me a power um, four or less. So I'm going to multiply the one and the one get one. I'm going to multiply the one and this. So that will give me negative x cubed over six. Okay, so I'm now going to multiply. Uh, let's rub those out so you can see the next ones I'm going to do. So let's multiply the x with this. And this, 
so that will give me a uh, x and then the next one will give me negative x to the 4 over 6 I'm going to stop when I get anything that gives me anything bigger than x to the power 4 so the next one I'm going to do is going to be this one that will give me plus x squared over 2 factorial or x squared over 2 now I'm not going to multiply that with this because that will give me x to the power 5 that's too big and there's no point multiplying it with that one either in fact why don't I just cross this out because I won't be using that at all so what else can I multiply so I can multiply that with that that will be fine that won't give me a power too big and multiply that with that so they're the last two multiplying those by one which is nice and easy so I'm going to have plus x cubed over 3 factorial which is 6 and then lastly plus x to the power 4 over 4 factorial which is 24 so we can now simplify this so we have the one that's on its own then this negative x cubed over 3 and a positive x cubed over 3 will cancel out there's one only one x squared term so that's plus x squared over 2 um, oh we've let's do it in order shall we we've missed the x term out so let's put the x term in it's just that term so we've done that we've done that um, right let's put in the now we'll do the x squared term so plus x squared over 2 looking good so far so that's done that just leaves this term and this term and if you do minus a 6 and you add uh, a 24th then you get negative an 8th so last term is minus x to the 4 over 8 so that is done as required so there are all the expansions for you the ones that are given in the formula book so remember you need to be able to work out compound composite functions uh, based on those and now you want to do exercise 2d on pages 46 to 48